You guys get me every time. What am I do with you? Welcome back guys, I'm glad to have you back. And welcome to Survival Shed once again. And in this video, we are working on the Belgium rucksack, a military Belgium rucksack, and we are winterizing it. But we're also doing a unboxing, um, not quite, but if you guys remember my last video I made when we did the military surplus overnighter here on my property, I had mentioned about getting a package, military surplus package. And I was hoping it was going to come in because we we're going to do an unboxing, but it never did. It finally came in. However, it's already been open because I wanted to see what it looked like first before I did the unboxing with you guys. And as I was unboxing it, it had fuel all over it. Gas. So, uh, hence you probably have an idea of what it is. So, let's go ahead and get down here to the table and we'll go ahead and do the uh, unboxing first. And then I'll show you how winterizing our... Belgian rucksack, which this rucksack I'm going to use on our Wisconsin trip this winter. So let's get down here. Okay, before I get this video started, a very special thanks to my wife, Angel Survival. It was my 40th birthday um, this week, or last week now, and Angel got me a really cool gift. Let me show you real fast. Angel got me a Singer 4411 heavy duty sewing machine. I've been wanting a sewing machine for a long time now. I've never used one before. <laughs> All I know how to do is to hand sew for the most part. And um, yeah, this was really awesome. Angel Survival is just the best. Thank you, honey. I know you'll be watching this video too. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is, the military surplus unboxing of the United States Marine Corps Coleman Peak One Multi Fuel Stove. Check this out. This thing has been in battle. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen one of these? Let me know in the comments below. I've seen some old videos of the uh, military using these and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Never did see the hard case form, but I found one online. Got an okay price for it. And uh, But this one here is, it's been in battle. As you can tell, I've cleaned it up since, and of course I told you it had fuel all over it. When they shipped it, they shipped it with fuel in it, and yeah. So, anyway, so here's the lid to this. We'll talk about this here in a minute. And here it is. The Peak One Multi-Fuel Stove, and it's even got the NSN number right there for it too, so that's pretty neat. Basically just unfolds like that and just like that. It uses white gas and it uses, um, well it uses Coleman's fuel gas is what I mean to say. And also uses kerosene and it also came with an extra jet fuel line or just a fuel line. I can't remember, I'm trying to think of the name of these. I think it's just your generator fuel line. This is for kerosene and also gives us a little wrench. And it also came with a bag that goes that this thing sits in. It's green, and it's sitting outside air drying for a long time now. So it's been out there for like five days trying to get that gas smell out of it after washing it. It still stinks. But this stove right here, we're going to take with us to our um, or on our Wisconsin trip that I'm doing here in a little bit. And um, yeah, some kind of fun. This is military surplus, so it will be a military surplus overnighter. Now I will say. This thing was leaking out of here, and I think that's what happened. The, whoever shipped this did a really good job at shipping it. They sealed it up all in plastic and everything, but it was just all over the whole entire uh, stove. It was inside the metal case. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I messaged a guy. He didn't realize there was fuel in it still. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot in there, but there's enough in it where it leaked out through this part here. So I had to take it off, and I used... Use this uh, to form a gasket sealant, slow drying, non hardening on it. And I saw it in a video actually of a guy taking this apart. And that's where I learned it from. So hopefully it works. I haven't, I haven't tested it out yet. I'm still going to let it dry some a little bit longer. But um, yeah. 
On with the case for it, which is really cool. It's got property of U.S. government, not for storage or cooking of ascetic foods, it says right there. It's probably hard to read. Then you got the USMC logo right there. So yeah, you can actually cook with this. So it's pretty thin metal, but it's cookable. And you got your little smaller one here. Now the only thing I'm missing with this is that the full versions come with a uh, carry, or a, it's a handle. It clamps on here and you can hold your food. I have one for another cook set, so I'll probably just add it to this if we end up cooking on this. But I'm thinking about using my mountain cook set for the uh, Wisconsin trip, so we'll see. So yep, that's that. We'll be using this in an upcoming video. And I'll show you a little, little bit of something else. A little bit of something else I got here. This will be for our upcoming video this winter in Wisconsin. It's a Firestarter Aviation Survival Spark Light. And this is as well military surplus. It's a fire starter. So we're going we're gonna to try this out this winter. And uh, so yeah, there you go. That's that. Let's move on to the Belgium rucksack. So here's the Belgium rucksack. And what I've been doing to winterize this, because this is what we're going to use this was in our Wisconsin trip. And um, I've been winterizing it by adding... I'll bring you guys, guys down closer here. Actually, I'll turn it sideways. There we go. I've added this 11 30 seconds fuel line. It's the thickness of it, or the, the whole diameter is 11 30 seconds, but it's fuel line and it's like a rubber material. But basically, the whole idea is of it, of it, I can't even talk this morning, um, is that you want to be able to, you know, it's winter time, so that's what this pack's going to be used for is a winter. Well, if, say if I want to grab my zipper before they just had these, just got the little metal zipper right there. Well, my idea was, is if my, when my gloves are on, you know, it's going to be really cold when we go this year to Wisconsin, so I want to be able to grab my zippers. And then being a winter pack, you know, I can, I can grab zippers like that, but you got to do it with your fingers. That's, a, that's hard. It's much easier just to have it like this. Got your glove. I got something to grip onto. And right there, you see it in my hand. So, I can just zip it open. So I just, I did it on all of it. I did it right here too as well. So I have something to grip onto, so I don't have to sit here and try to pinch. I have to take, or actually what I'd originally do is take my gloves off and have to hurry up and open it. Put my gloves back on. It's not what I want to do. I want to be able to grab it. I got something to grip on. So I pretty much did this on the two rocket pouches and the top pouch here, both zippers and the sleeping bag compartment as well. So that's made my life a lot easier. <laughs> so we got that out of the way. I guess I'll show you some other stuff I've been doing in the survival shed off camera. So I don't know if you saw my other video, but I built this right here, this uh, shelf. And we have a deep freezer right down here. And I, I was trying to figure out an idea how I can put a shelf in here. And I wanted to have it above the freezer. I thought about putting shelving against the wall, like on the other walls. But I decided to go ahead and build one above the deep freezer. So I can store like canned goods and MREs. And I'll show you what I got right here. So right here I have boxes of trioxine fuel. And uh, that's a smaller box. These are actually different size boxes. But um, yeah, these are pretty, these are from the 90s. And actually they're from the 90s, they're probably from the 80s as well. But these are all pretty old, still good. So I got all my trioxine fuel, then I got some M71 Swiss stoves that we used in our last video, propane tanks for our lanterns, Coleman white gas, and just a little portion of some MREs back there that we'll probably be eating up this winter. So there you go, there's a little shelf I made. And, Eventually, I think I'm going to be putting a military cot over there. So I got somewhere to sleep out there when I'm in the doghouse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, I get in trouble too sometimes, so you know. <laughs> Guys, I want to show you one more thing. I don't think you've seen this yet either. I've switched out my hot weather survival rig to my cold weather survival rig. I was going to originally make a series on this this winter. I might just make a video or two using this rig, but I changed my mind on it. Just to kind of just wanted to do something different. I just wanted to get some camp out videos in, just camping using surplus stuff. So 
we're still doing that. It's just not going to be a series on a cold weather survival rig. Maybe I'll save it for the next winter. But we're going to use this, and I'll bring it over here and show you what I did. But I kind of brought back to life the LV88. And when I say that, I'm talking about the LV88 before it was the LV88. It was an experimental LV88 uh, rig. It had the CFP90 patrol pack on it. It didn't have this. This is a Dutch sleeping pad. But uh, it originally had the pack connected to it. And I've got mine connected up here. And I have yet to really see if it's going to work. I've, uh, I wore this rig with the vest on and it wants to pull back off my back. But I think when I have it counterbalanced with stuff on the pistol belt and everything, it might counterbalance stay on my shoulders better. But that's for a future video. But I wanted to just give you a little glimpse of that. But it's, it's one of the coolest rigs I've I've worked on, I think. And I also did the same thing on my CFP patrol pack, CFP 9 patrol packs. I put the the rubber on there too. And that's good. It's just good for winter time. So there is that on my mannequin. So I just making that short video for you guys this weekend. I don't have any overnights this weekend. Maybe next weekend, I'm not for sure. But um, I'm definitely going to have a nice winter camp out the, in Wisconsin when we get up there. So that'd be really, uh, that's going to be a fun video. So, but I'm going to at least try to get one, one more overnighter in uh, before we go up there. So we'll see, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and please leave your comments below and let me know what you thought of this video. All right, guys, God bless you and take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.